Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about radical numbers. Okay, so before we begin, first of all, let me let me say this. This is a radical sign. This is your radicand, the number. What would be over here would be your index. I'm calling it n. So this is your index. So here's an example. 16 basically is 4 squared, right? So the index here would be 2. So what you'd like to do is whatever number you have that's raised to a certain power, the power and the index are the same, then they both just cancel out and you're left with just a 4. Okay? And this is your radical sign right here. Okay, let me get rid of this here. And you should really write these down because as we're working some of the problems, uh, I'm going to refer to some of these rules here. Number one is only like radicals can be added or subtracted. So if you have something like, you know, root 2 plus root 2, this is equal to 2 root 2. And the reason why it's 2 root 2 and not like you know root 4 is because if it was root 4 you'd be multiplying and that's not what we're doing like radicals are like like x plus x those are like variables well, in, this here, in this case here like radicals have the same number or the same variables inside so like here's another example uh, rad xy plus rad xy is equal to 2 rad xy okay and number two is radicals can be broken up in two products. So what that means is, let's say you have, you know, root 16. Well, that's equal to root 4 times root 4. And this would be equal to 2. This would be equal to 2. 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And 4 is equal to root 16. Okay. And when multiplying radicals, you want to multiply the coefficients first then the values under the radical, and then simplify it. So let's say you have something like root 24. Well, in that case, this would be equal to root 4 times root 6. And simplifying basically means that you break down what's under the radical uh, into primes. In this case here, 2 times 2 would be uh, 2 squared, and 2 squared and it can be written once as 2. And you know, if you don't understand what I just said, basically the square root of 4 is just 2. I'm just kind of elaborating for those of you that go, hey, you know, I, I know that, but what's another way to look at it? And I'll explain that right now in a second, but basically right here you would get 2 root 6. Okay? And let me go back and erase some of this stuff here. Okay, so what I was saying there was this. Let's say you had the 24, right? and I was telling you that it was root 4 times root 6. Well, what I did really, you can also look at it this way. 2 times 2, which is 4, times 6, right? Well, here's the two twos I was talking about. That's like 2 squared, right? They cancel out. You can write it once outside the radical. And you write radical 6. That's left over. And this would be the same as root 24. Okay, so only cancel products of like radicals and rational expressions. Rational expression is like a fraction, you know, where you have like x over x squared, and this cancels out to a 1, lower the power by 1 degree, this equals 1 over x. And what I'm trying to say with the uh, canceling of products, let me just clear this off here. Let's say for instance you had, you know, root 3 3 root 3 over root 3. Well, these are pr these right here are factors and this is a whole product. Okay? This is a coefficient and this is your radical. You can cancel them out and you just get 3. Okay? If this had been like 3 rad 2 over rad 3, well then you couldn't cancel it out. And not only that, but you would actually rationalize the denominator, but we're not going to do that right now. That's that's a little later. You need to learn certain concepts first before you start doing that. 
So um, let me go back here. Number five is raising a radical to a power equal to the radical's index cancels the radical. Basically, this is it. I don't know if you guys were taught this yet, but every radical that you see, we're talking only about square roots, not you know higher degree uh, roots. Uh, basically, what's happening here is this four, the square root of four is equal to this radical four with an index of two, which is the same as just radical four. And radical four is equal to two. Well, what's happening is this. That radical four can be written as two squared with an index of two. So when the index and the power that's, that's uh, raising a certain number two are the same, so in this case if the two is the same as this second degree here, then this cancels, the radical itself cancels, and so does this, and you're just left with a 2. So let's say you had, you know, like, index of 3, uh, root 2, so cube root of 2, raised to the third power. Well, in that case, this cancels with that right there, and you're just left with the 2. Over here, the 2 is on the inside, and that's fine. I don't know, actually, you know what? I don't know if you've been taught this, but this is something you guys may uh, may run into uh, later on when you're working these kind of radical problems. It's true that you can square the inside of a radical. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you have three root two, the quantity squared well you should know that you can you square the the three and you square the the rad two so there's two ways to look at it one way is this way three squared rad two quantity squared and another way to look at it is three squared rad two squared so be familiar with this um, you can make problems up like this for yourself in any which case remember I said that the radical is uh, like the square root of 2 basically has an index of 2. Well, in this case here, you know, this 2 cancels with the radical, and this 2 here cancels with the radical, and this is equal to 9 times the 2, which is equal to 18, and the same thing here, 9 times the 2 is equal to 18. Okay, and the last one here, 6, square roots cannot be negative. So, Let's say I gave you the square root of negative 25. Okay, you can't do that. Uh, at least not, not yet. Um, the solution for this is not a real number, but we're not talking about that. That number would be the element of the complex numbers. And, you know, we're not talking about uh, complex numbers right now, but you will be able to, to do that. For the time being, if you're algebra students, really what you're doing is only using that to solve quadratic equations. Uh, for the calculus students, uh, you'll use that more like in polar coordinate system. But anyway, let me go back to some examples here um, because a lot of people have a hard time trying to uh, work these radical expressions. And the reason why is because sometimes they haven't had enough practice with these problems. So I have a, I have a few problems here that we can start working on. So let me clear the screen here. Now make sure you copy this, okay? Okay, so let's practice. So we have 3 radical x plus 9 radical x. Okay, well, you have like radicals, so that means you can just add the coefficients. In this case here, 9 plus 3 is going to be equal to 12, and it's rad x. Another way to look at it would be like this. 3 radical x plus 9 radical x. 3 plus 9 is 12, and then you're talking about radical x's. So 12 radical x. How about this one? How about a rad x plus rad x? Well, they're like radicals, but you have an a over here, and there's an imaginary one here. So what I'm going to do is Technically, your, your answer is just this. You would just leave it like this. 